Hey guys, what's going on? I thought I would do a short little video uh, early, early this morning before I go to work and just kind of tell you what's going on with me and um, and uh, hopefully I'll get a word from the Lord to share with you guys. Um, haven't been doing very many videos lately. Um, I recently had to have skin cancer removed. Um, I'm sure you can see the these little bandages going across here. This is about three weeks ago, and uh, they had to dig a pretty big hole, and there's a pretty big incision made uh, to remove it. And then uh, after the stitches came out about a week later, the stitches on the inside in the heart of it kind of collapsed. Um, so it's been kind of, it's not been very, <laughs> very pleasant at all, to say the least. So I just uh, I ask you to just pray for me that it would heal quickly you know we're past the three week mark and it's it's still kind of jacked up so I just ask that you'd pray for uh, healing for me um, also sister Barbara's been in and out of the ER and it's in a very serious condition according to some posts that I've seen so we need to be lifting her up in prayer and uh, you know I'm not a subscriber of her channel uh, but regardless of whether or not you agree or disagree with some of the things that she uh, proclaims is irrelevant you know the bible says that you know people will know that we are disciples of jesus because we love one another talking about your brothers and sisters in christ because we love one another uh not because we agree with everything that one another says but because we love one another and we need to be praying and loving especially to those to everyone but especially to those uh, who are in the body of christ being wrong about something or saying something that that disagrees with your pet favorite pet doctrine does not make them a false prophet um, it doesn't make them any less a follower of Jesus than you or I are if we were to go by people's failures uh, then we would all fall short right because we all fall short of the glory of God uh, so we need to be lifting her up in prayer um, and I'm sure there's thousands of people doing that um, you know, Brother Charles, too, you know, he's got the eye issue going on. And just, um, there was another brother who was in the hospital recently, another watchman. Um, and he's, he's slipping my mind right now. Apologize for that. Maybe the Lord will bring it to mind. Uh, oh, uh, Paul Bagley. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Um, so we need to be lifting these people up in prayer. And uh, just remember, you know, that, you know, the watchman that are on the wall, that have been warning you for years uh, to get ready for the coming of Jesus Christ and, you know, the darkness that is coming upon this earth, uh, you know, they're under attack. Um, some, you know, some of us physically, uh, some of us through verbal persecution or financial persecution, and there's all kinds of trouble being thrown at the watchman. So please be praying for those who are, who are standing on the wall, um, for your benefit uh, you know you might look and watch videos of people and you think well they've got it all together because they've got a great message or or whatever but the truth is is every one of us and I'm just I'll just speak for myself but I assume the other watchmen are the same way we're just human beings that just decided to share what we believe on a video and in, in hopes to encourage other people uh, but we still have the persecutions that that we suffer. We, and honestly, when you put yourself out there like like this, you open yourself up to more persecution and more problems and trials uh, from the enemy. Because the enemy wants you to be quiet. Uh, the enemy doesn't want you to proclaim that Jesus Christ is coming soon and that the end of days are here. Uh, so please just remember... You know, uh, that we're all, you know, in this together. Uh, the watchmen are not, you know, they're not supermen. Uh, they have trials and tribulations just like you do. They have family members and friends who can't stand them just like you do. Uh, they have points of failure just like you do. They're tempted just like you're tempted. And we struggle just like you struggle. And so please lift up the watchmen in prayer and uh, just remember me. And I would really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, it is getting dark. Um, the the mood, the uh, the attitude towards Christianity and towards Jews right now is the worst it's been in a thousand years. 
um, the world uh, hates us. Uh, we know that this is going to be true. Jesus said, you know, they hated him first. Uh, but we see that just an ever-increasing foaming at the mouth towards God's people, uh, even in the United States of America, which has been the most friendly nation to God's people uh, for the last several hundred years. And uh, praise God for that. Praise God that there that there was a place known as the United States of America where people of all beliefs could come and practice and believe in that freely. Uh, praise Jesus for the United States of America because without the United States of America, the word of God would not have been distributed to every corner of the world. You know, we can talk about all the awful things that is the United States of America, and it's just to, dis to point those things out. But let's not forget that there's never been a nation in the world that proclaimed the gospel to the rest of the world like the men and women who've lived in the United States have done over the past couple hundred years. N the number one, you know, the United States has distributed more Bibles than any other country in the history of the world. Um, so praise Jesus that this place existed Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's no longer the nation that we think of like that because of the things going on. There's a growing disdain, a growing hatred for Christianity. And you need to be putting on your full armor of Elohim. You know, you need to get that breastplate of righteousness. Get that shield of faith. Um, make sure you have your sword. That is the word of God. And we know it's going to get dark. You know, Jesus described to us that what the last days we know look like, and we're seeing that. Uh, we have prophecy being fulfilled by in front of us, in front of our very eyes, with Russia going into Syria. Um, it's just, it's just amazing what's going on. You know, Isaiah says that Damascus, which is the heart there in Syria, would be a ruinous heap. It's almost a ruinous heap as we speak. You're seeing bibl biblical prophecy being fulfilled in your eyes, so be encouraged about that. But understand that it's going to be dark before Jesus comes. That's why we need the lamps filled with oil, with our wicks trimmed, so we can see our way through the darkness, because he's coming at midnight with a shout. It's going to be dark. We need not be like the foolish maidens who kind of went off their own way, you know, that, and uh, they didn't have enough oil to light the way. We need to make sure that we're not like that. We need to make sure we're not going our own way. And that doesn't mean you can't enjoy things or, you know, I've got hobbies. I've got things I love to do. But every morning, the first thing I want to do is get filled with the spirit uh, to fill my lamp full of oil because today could be the day that the Lord comes back. And, um, you know, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Yes, it's getting dark. Yes, persecution is coming. Yes, they're censoring people on the Internet. Yes, there's a growing hatred for Christianity. Yes, Christians are being butchered across the world. It's bad. It's bad. The whole world has turned against Israel. And I mean the whole world has turned their backs against Israel. It's getting dark. But one thing I've noticed is that God, our, our Elohim, is just a master of story. He's just a master of swooping in in that last moment when all hope is lost. You know, the Israelites, uh, they come to the sea and there's an army behind them. And what's God do? Psh, parts the sea. You know, in that last moment when there's no hope left for anything that a man can do, only faith in God, that's when he shows up. And uh, it's going to be that way in this situation. It's going to be so dark. There's going to be no hope left, you know, Ooh, no hope left in man, only faith in God. And uh, really, we're pretty much getting to that point where we're like, you know, you know, nothing can turn this around. This, this ship has sailed. Only intervention by God can save us. I want to read and finish up here by just reading a Psalms. And uh, I hope this has blessed you. It's just kind of a ramble this morning. I'm going to read Psalm 46. I believe it's 46. And I haven't opened this particular Bible in many, in a very, very long time. This is my original Bible. This is a King James Version. Normally I read from the Hallelujah Scriptures, but I thought I'd read from this King James Version Bible that was given to me by a Baptist church where I was first baptized uh, October 28th, 2001. This was a little, like, shed, basically, that was a church where I first heard the gospel proclaimed in a way that made me fall on my knees. And uh, 
So this is where that Bible came from. I want to read, I uh, believe, Psalm here, 46. You know, like I said, God likes to show up in those last moments when the, when the trouble is really upon us. God is our refuge and strength. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, he cutteth the spear and sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So even though the seems like the whole earth is being moved and mountains are being thrown into the sea and war is raging remember do not fear because god has got it all under control his will will be done and he is our refuge in these times of trouble and we just need to remember that and, and keep that in our hearts um, you know that's part of what i think it means to have a full lamp of oil is keeping those words in our in our hearts and knowing that even though it's dark, uh, we can still rely on our Lord and that Jesus is coming. And sometime soon, we don't know when it's going to be, there's going to be a shout of an archangel, and he's going to gather his elect. And until that day, we will just pray and worship and uh, do the best that we can to be a salt and light to this world. Uh, I hope I've encouraged you in some way, shape, or form. If so, let me know in the comments below. Peace and grace be with all of you. God bless.